It was hard. I had a little child, only five years old. I come from Kosovo and Metohija from Pek. And that is the precise location where it all began for me. I was 16 years old when your president visited. I support both the Belarusian and Russian peoples. We absolutely remember that visit by Lukashenko. He was the only leader who visited Serbia at that particular time. And we are extremely grateful to him for taking the time to come. It was scary and it must not be forgotten. This cannot be forgiven. This is inhumane. We've supported Lukashenko since. We remember how it was. And they commenced bombing without United Nations approval. And they commenced bombing without his approval. I was here in Belgrade. Your president Lukashenko arrived. Yes, I remember it. All 50 years that I have lived in this world, I have never had bad thoughts about Belarus. Just a friendly relationship. Thank God at that time we were in Belarus. My comrade from Belarus, a representative of the Minsk tractor plant, was taken to the border. The spouse and children who were little left for Belarus. All the time Belarusians were in Belarus. After one month, nearly two months, they were present. Stop anyone in Serbia with the words, we are from Belarus. You will get a story and words of gratitude to our president for the support in 1999. When without the sanctions of the UN Security Council, NATO begins the operation Allied Force. They start bombing Yugoslavia for humanitarian purposes, supposedly protecting the national minority and the whole world turns a blind eye to it. However, why be surprised they still haven't seen the light? What causes me special pain today is that back then the entire West and the entire world turned a blind eye to it and left us to fight alone. No one came to our aid. We remember the initiative of your president, Lukashenko, to help us during that time of need. Warhawks devastated land, decided they have right to kill, blow up bridges, bomb schools, hospitals, TV, use cassettes, depleted uranium shells. For not surrendering, they didn't recognize US hegemony and didn't give up their land. Preposition found, internal conflict. We know methods well, falsification, lies, blackmail, isolation with sanctions. And then there was the deafening roar of bombers filling the air. Well, make sure to drink up and savor every drop. And only one person, the leader of the Belarusians, our president, decides to put peace and humanity above politics and even his own security. Lukashenko flies to Belgrade for visit. He had absolutely no special guarantees whatsoever. He could only rely solely on reason as hundreds of NATO planes flew over our country each and every single day without exception or fail. And in general, to fly to our airport, which was practically closed, was a big risk and great courage. NATO strongly advises against the action of flying in this situation. It was extremely critical and highly dangerous. It was critical and dangerous because planes from NATO were flying continuously 24 hours a day, both day and night, from all neighboring countries. The Alliance doesn't provide security guarantees. Also, it sends fighters and maintains aviation flights. I calmly, you know, relate to everything, to all warnings. I know how much I am loved in NATO. Board number one forced to descend to 500 meters. The situation is extraordinary, but the possible solution to the conflict is worthwhile. My visit to Yugoslavia during this difficult time can even if only by a few millimeters, bring us closer to a peaceful resolution of this problem. Regarding the prospects, I sincerely hope that the situation will come to a peaceful resolution in the near future, as the deadlock is already apparent to both parties involved. But if for Yugoslavia this is a just war, a patriotic war to defend its people, then I think NATO and Western states need to get out of this difficult situation. During air raid, negotiations held between Alexander Lukashenko and Slobodan Milosevic. The duration of the communication extended for a period of time exceeding six hours, 
totaling more than six hours in length. The Belarusian leader walked, saw gaps, traces of NATO bombs, visited the military academy, supported the wounded in the wards. Alexander Lukashenko arrived in Belgrade on April 14, 1999. On the 28th, 31 cars with humanitarian aid left Minsk for Belgrade. A total of 500 metric tons of cargo is being transported. First, this is not only their war. We are absolutely convinced that they are waging a war today, not only for themselves, not only for their land. When utilizing historical parallels and drawing lessons from history, it becomes a true test of strength that allows us to gauge our capabilities and learn from the past. It is highly probable that this is the case. Sadly, it commences once more in the Balkans. Produce the second output. They will not break the items that are given to them. This is my strong conviction, not the initial occasion I have visited Yugoslavia, not the first time our delegation is present, and not the first time I have had a meeting with the president of Yugoslavia's office. During a 20-day period of brutal warfare, they mercilessly slaughtered hundreds of innocent civilians, while remarkably only a few soldiers, who were their intended adversaries, met their demise at their hands. Conclusion 3. NATO should put an end to this dubious operation as soon as possible, as it is of utmost importance to do so. I am completely and absolutely convinced of this, and the sooner, the better it will be for all of us. Just today, you need to find a way to somehow save face, if it is still possible, and get out of this dreadful situation that we are in right now. Prophetic words. And then, in 99, and now Alexander Lukashenko is confident, there is no alternative to peace. The media was the target of the attack. It is crucial that the enemy be silenced without delay. Rockets bombed radio and television building in Serbia. 16 dead. Monument to victims exists. These are all our colleagues. This is the technical staff, operators, and video engineers. 16 people. None. Some global organizations recognized it as a war crime. Did anyone take responsibility for this? Rhetorical question. We are currently positioned on the foundation of your life, so to speak. What do you feel? Could you please specify the emotions you are referring to? I'd like to understand better. Initially, it was grief, the desire to resist, regret, and simultaneously the desire to create something new and not cease working. And this is already Novi Sad. We came to the radio and television of Vojvodina, one of the two state TV and radio companies in Serbia, to talk to Mael Kapratz. In 99, he was the TV director, wiped off the face of the earth by NATO missiles. Here you particularly keenly comprehend. Information, however, is the weapon that the adversary attempts to demolish initially. Didn't tell you this at the start. I consider it necessary to emphasize that at the time when we were at our most difficult, when we were being bombed, the only president who visited our country was President Lukashenko. We can't forget it. First, it was necessary to show political wisdom, to take the right side, it was necessary to have personal courage to do it. President Lukashenko has these qualities and he has preserved them to this day. The air raids went on for a span of 78 days and nights, leading to the loss of up to 4,000 lives, up to 10,000 wounded. These are the data of the Serbian side. The NATO bombing campaign in Yugoslavia signifies the initiation of a gross and aggressive expansion of NATO towards the east, setting a precedent for future actions and geopolitical developments in the region. By disregarding all principles of international law, disregarding all principles of the United Nations, the Security Council, and so on, we are currently in this era, and it has not yet come to an end. NATO is in the process of moving towards the East, and it is doing so in a highly aggressive manner. You know, these are double standards. NATO has big plans extending from the Baltic Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, including a campaign to the East, starting with Belarus as the first target. We feel very good. I know I see everything that's happening with you. I want to say to Belarusians, be happy that you live in Belarus. And you do not require anyone from external sources to instruct you on how to lead your life. The people of Belarus should decide how they will live. 
Viktoria Senkovic, Anzor Tujaev, and people of Serbia in the main broadcast. <laughs>